These data are from a study by some media researchers who were investigating the use of fear appeals in political ads. A fear appeal is a message that tries to scare you in order to improve its chances of persuading you. So in political advertising, for example, a candidate might claim that some terrible thing will happen if the candidate's opponent wins. The researchers were interested in whether fear appeals were more likely to show up in political ads that focus on issues than in political ads designed to polish a candidate's image. To answer that question, they collected a sample of 1,213 political ads and viewed each one to determine whether it was an issue ad or an image ad, and also whether it did or did not contain a fear appeal. In the data set, there are three columns of information. The first column, column A, simply tells us the ID number for each of the ads that the researchers looked at. In column B, we have an indication of whether each ad was an image ad or an issue ad. And in column C, we have an indication of whether the ad contained a fear appeal or did not contain a fear appeal. To answer the question the researchers were interested in, we have to determine what percentage of the image ads contained a fear appeal, what percentage of the issue ads contained a fear appeal, and then compare those two percentages. To do that, we'll first create a pivot table that will show us the percentages we want. Then we'll use a chi-square test to determine whether the percentages are non-randomly different. First, let's make the pivot table. Start by clicking anywhere in columns A, B, or C. This just tells Excel which data we're going to deal with when creating the pivot table. Now click the Insert tab and choose the Pivot Table icon. When you do that, the Create Pivot Table dialog box opens up, and the defaults here will probably be just fine. The one thing you want to do is check the radio button next to the existing worksheet location. This is something I like to do when making pivot tables. All we're doing here is specifying that Excel needs to put the pivot table output here in the same worksheet where the original data are. If you try this a couple of times and decide you'd rather have the output uh, on a different tab, which is what the default is, that's just fine. This is just a preference of mine. So having clicked the radio button, now let me click here in the location box and then come back to the spreadsheet and specify where I want that output to go. I'm going to choose cell D2 right here. And now click OK. Now it's time to build the pivot table report. This is pretty much a drag and drop operation as you'll see in a minute. It's pretty easy to do. The hard part here is figuring out what to put where. Now in order to figure that out we need to think about which of our variables we think is the cause of which other of our variables. Now there are two candidates here. We have the type of ad and the type of appeal. So which do you think is the case? Does the type of appeal in an ad determine whether the ad is an image ad or an issue ad? Or does the type of ad, whether it's an image ad or an issue ad, determine whether the ad does or does not contain a fear appeal? Well, if you think about the theory that the, that the researchers were working from, it's kind of the second thing. It's the idea that the type of ad, whether the ad is an issue ad or an image ad, causes or determines whether the ad will or will not contain a fear appeal. So let's go with that. Let's say that the cause is the type of ad and the result is the type of appeal in the ad. Now once you've figured that out, it's a matter of putting the cause in the column labels box and the result in the row labels box and also in the sum of values box, which you'll see that in a minute. So let's put the cause, the ad type, in the column labels box. Just drag and drop and then let up with the mouse. And then put the result in the row labels box. The result is the ad appeal. There's the row labels box. Just drag and drop and let up. And the result also needs to go in the sum of values box, which is right next to the row labels box. Now as I was doing that, Excel was building this little pivot table for me right here. So we can see now that of the image ads, 60 of them contained fear appeals and 369 of them did not contain a fear appeal for a total of 429 image ads. Among the issue ads, 204 of them contained a fear appeal 
and 580 of them did not contain a fee repeal, and there were a total of 784 issue ads. The next step might seem a little strange, but just watch what happens and then I'll explain why we do this. I'm going to highlight all of the data in the pivot table that I just created, right click, and choose copy. And then come to a cell just underneath the pivot table, and right click again, and choose paste special, and then choose values, and then click OK. And then we need to do it one more time. Come to a cell just below the table you just pasted, right click, paste special, values, and OK. So we've made two copies of the original pivot table. Now that we've done that, we can come back to the original pivot table and change the information that's there. Here's why we would want to do that. What we're looking at right now is is are the counts, the number of each type of ad you have. And image ads that have fear appeals, image ads that don't have fear appeals, issue ads that have fear appeals, and issue ads that don't have fear appeals. To really see the pattern, we don't need the counts, we need percentages. We need to know what percentage of fear appeals, or what percentage of image ads contained a fear appeal, and what percentage of issue ads contained a fear appeal. Excel can give us those percentages pretty quickly. Just check anywhere in the box, as I have, and then come down to the Sum of Values box and choose this little down arrow next to the count of, uh, of, of ad appeal. And this little menu will come up. The last item on the menu is Value Field Settings. Click that. And then choose the Show Values As tab. And finally, change No Calculation to Percent of Column Total and then click OK. Doing that tells Excel to show us the percentages in the original pivot table rather than the counts and that comes in pretty handy because now you can look at these percentages and see that a greater proportion of issue ads contain fear appeals than image ads. Specifically, 26% of the issue ads contained a fear appeal compared to only 13.99 or basically 14% of the image ads. So issue ads were more likely to contain a fear appeal than image ads were. Now the question is, is that difference big enough to suggest that it's non-random, that it's not due just to random sampling error? If it's not due to random sampling error or randomness in general, then there must be something systematic going on. There must be some systematic relationship between the type of ad, an image ad or an issue ad, and whether or not the, the ad contains a fear appeal or doesn't contain a fear appeal. To answer that question, we need a chi-square test, and here's how to compute that. We're going to need those two copies of the original table that we created just a moment ago. I'm going to come to the second of those two, and hollow it out. Basically highlight those four values right in the center of the table and then hit the delete button on the keyboard to clear them out. Now we need to compute the expected values. These are the values that we would expect to see in this table if there were no systematic relationship between the type of ad and the presence or absence of a fear appeal. And you do it by following a pretty specific routine um, in, in, in creating the formula. We start with an equal sign, as you always do when you are creating a formula in, in Excel, and then come to the bottom of the row, in this case it's 429, multiply that, I'm just hitting the asterisk on the keyboard, by whatever's at the end of that row, in this case 264. Hitting the slash to signal division, and then coming down to the grand total, in this case 1213 and hit enter. Now com to compute the expected value for this cell we follow the same pattern. Start with an equal sign, go to the bottom of the column, multiply by whatever's at the end of the row. Notice it's changed. It's not 264 now, it's the next row down, 949. Hit the slash key for division and divide by the grand total. And do the same for the other two empty cells. Equal bottom of the column times the end of the row divided by the grand total. One more time, bottom of the column times the end of the row divided by the grand total. 
And so now in the first table, we have the original counts of each type of ad that we have, 60, 204, 369, and 580. In the table we just finished completing, we have the expected counts, the counts we would expect to see if there were no systematic relationship between the type of ad, image, or issue, and the presence or absence of a fear appeal. What the chi-square does is it compares the observed counts with the expected counts that we just computed to see if the difference between the observed and expected counts is non-random. Here's how to get that chi-square. Let me scroll down to give myself just a little bit more room. I'm going to type a label right here, chi-square test, and then in the column right next to it, I'm going to type the formula for getting a chi-square test. It starts with an equal sign, and then the function chisq period test. Now hit the left parenthesis and use your mouse to highlight the original counts. These up here, the 60, 204, 369, and 580. And then a comma. And now highlight the expected counts. These are the ones we just finished computing. And then finish with a right parenthesis and hit enter. So there's the probability that you would see a difference this big between the observed and expected counts just due to randomness. And in fact, that probability is pretty small. This is another uh, number expressed in, so in scientific notation. It's very, very small. This would be zero point and then five zeros to the right of the decimal point. And in the sixth decimal place, the number one, one, nine, five, nine, five. So that's a very small number, far less than 0.05. So what we would conclude here is that there seems to be a non-random relationship between the type of ad, whether it's a, an issue ad or an image ad, and the ad's likelihood of, include, of, of, of containing a fear appeal. So going back to the percentages that we computed a moment ago, it seems that issue ads are much more likely than image ads to contain a fear appeal. We found that 26% of the issue ads contained a fear appeal compared to only 13.9 or basically 14% of the image ads. And the chi-square tells us that that difference is non-random, that there must be something systematic going on between the type of ad and whether or not the ad contains a fear appeal. Now let's look at how we would know going into this study that we need to do a pivot table and a chi-square test. To begin with, how many variables are involved here? Well, there are two. There's the type of ad, either an issue ad or an image ad, and then there's whether the ad does or does not contain a fear appeal. So that's two variables. Now what about the measurement level of each variable? Well, both of the variables in this study are categorical. The type of ad could be either an issue ad or an image ad. So you have two categories of ad there, issue ad or image ad, and you're putting each ad into one of those two categories. So that's a categorical variable. Similarly, the presence or absence of a fear appeal, well, that's also a categorical variable. The fear appeal is either there or it's not there. We're not measuring how, how there it is, what, what the degrees of thereness are. We're just saying it's either present or it's absent. It's either there or not there. So again, you have two categories of condition, so that makes it a categorical variable. Given that we have two variables, that they're both measured categorically. The appropriate procedure is a pivot table with a chi-square test.